Good afternoon, Colorado Mesa University, and welcome back to the season finale of Crossing the Line. I am your host, Matt Entrican, and with me is my partner, Sean Sullivan. Sean, how you doing? Semester's coming to a close. Playoffs are coming in hot. Very it's time hot. For, very hot, and it's time for us just to you know, just dive right into it and predict these playoffs. Let's dive into it then. All right, so this is the season finale, as I said, and since we will not return to this set until the playoffs are well underway, Sean and I are going to reveal our entire playoff bracket for the 2022 NFL playoffs. 32 teams, 14 spots, 13 teams in the AFC with at least uh, six wins, 12 teams in the NFC with at least five wins. Shaping up to be a wild, wild finish. So, Sean, we're going to start off with the number one overall seed in the AFC. Who do you got? So, the AFC right now, I only see a couple teams making some big jumps right now. As of right now, I think New England right now will probably hold that number one seed. They're honestly one of the hottest teams in football right now. Bill Belichick is doing some of his best coaching since back in 2001 with Tom Brady was just like a rookie or a, a, a spry young lad as opposed to the almost 45-year-old man he is now, which is weird to think about, the ageless wonder, Tom Brady. But with New England, I think almost you look at how Tampa Bay, Tom Brady last year, proved that he doesn't need Bill Belichick to win the Super Bowl. I think it's corny to say that there's newfound motivation. Obviously, Bill Belichick and the Patriots always the goal is to win a Super Bowl. But I think there's just been a different spark that's been lit under Bill Belichick. And I don't see them relinquishing that number one seed right now. They're sitting at 8-4. and four. There's three other teams that we're talking about are, are at 8-4. and four. But I don't see any team that will be playing more consistent or better than the Patriots. The Patriots do one thing well, especially this year, and that is they don't beat themselves. Mac Jones doesn't really turn the ball over all that much. The running the ball, as we saw on Monday night, Mac Jones only threw it three times. That actually shows how good of a team they are. Obviously, the, condi the weather conditions were wild. They only needed to throw the ball three times. So if you can win games with throwing the ball three times, you're looking like you're going to be a pretty good team in the playoff. Now, I will say it is worth pointing out that though they did have over 200 yards on the ground, it only equaled out to about 3.2 yards per carry. So they really weren't incredibly uh, effective, effective when you talk about a carry-by-carry carry standpoint. But... I agree with all your other points. You got Bill Belichick, one of the greatest coaches of all time, in my opinion, the greatest coach of all time, and never doubt Belichick, especially the fire that's been lit under him the last couple years, seeing Tom Brady and the Buccaneers have all this success. That's pissed him off, and I feel like the last thing you want in the world is a pissed off Bill Belichick, if you ask me. And uh, third, you're right, they don't make mistakes. They don't beat themselves like they were able to take advantage of the Bills yesterday or on Sunday when they beat themselves. Um, and I've always said it on this show, it's who's hot is who's going to make the run. Patriots are hot, I hate to say it, but Patriots are also going to be my one seed for the AFC. And going off what you're saying of who's hot right now, that goes perfectly into our number two seed right now. I have the Kansas City Chiefs crawling up right now. They're sitting, if the playoffs started today, they're sitting around the fourth seed, I believe. I see them jumping up to the number two seed. They're getting hot right now. I think they've won four of the last five games in a row, minus that, uh, they had that big blowout loss a couple weeks ago. That has woken up something. Andy Reid, fantastic coming off the bye week. They're able to handle the Broncos pretty soundly on Sunday Night Football. Patrick Mahomes playing well right now. The defense, also most importantly, is stepping up. They're playing some really good football right now. So I see them jumping over uh, the three seed and the four seed right now. I see Kansas City at number two. For number two for me, I actually have the Tennessee Titans. I don't like the Kansas City Chiefs to make a run at that two spot, especially because though – Chiefs have been winning. It hasn't been especially beautiful. That was not a beautiful win over the Denver Broncos. Tennessee Titans, they have the easiest schedule from here on out. I know things aren't great for them right now, but they're still a great team. They still have an impactful defense. For me, it's Tennessee Titans. Well, if you're talking about winning ugly, that's the definition of Tennessee Titans football. <laughs> and I have them at number three right now. Like you're saying, they have a not that good of a division. Indy's been playing good as of late. Jonathan Taylor's an absolute monster, but they just had such a slow start. I don't think they can necessarily, with Tennessee sitting at 8-4 right now, I don't think Tennessee can lose enough games to have the Colts jump them. But, you know, Derrick Henry's still out. If they get him back for the playoffs, that would be absolutely huge. Obviously, coming off the injury, but that would mean a relatively fresh Derrick Henry. Like we were talking about earlier this mm -hmm. season, the Tennessee Titans playing very, very good defense. The defensive line's fantastic. Well coached by Mike Vrabel. That's why I see him sitting comfortably at number three. 
Okay. I have the Baltimore Ravens coming in at number three. Things are a little bit raw. Oh, excuse me. I do not have the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I have the LA Chargers actually coming in at number three. Baltimore is currently at number three. But I think the Chargers are going to come out and make a run. Things have been consistent for them. But I believe in Justin Herbert. Uh, their, their strength of schedule is nothing too imposing. And I think they feel that sense of urgency where now is the time that they got to get going. And I think that they can do it. I think they're going to... Uh, I don't like the way the Chiefs are playing, and I don't like the way that, I mean, obviously the Raiders and the Broncos, they have their own problems. I think L.A. Chargers are going to come and surge and take the division. You think the Chargers are going to be able to take the Well, I guess the Chargers have somewhat been the Chiefs buster as of late. <laughs> they, I don't necessarily them. see them. I love me some Justin Herbert. I have the Chargers in the playoffs right now, the number five seed. I don't think that, I think, Andy Reid's got the defense playing well enough for the Chiefs. I don't necessarily think the Chargers can. They're, they haven't been consistent enough. They play well when you need them. They're definitely a playoff team, don't get me wrong. You know, they're able to, well, look, let's look at that Sunday night game against Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They had a big lead, and last week they had a really big lead against Cincinnati as well. Obviously, and I think a case could be made if Joe Burrow didn't have that whatever happened to his pinky happen, there's a very good chance they could come back. And speaking of come back, I do have the Cincinnati Bengals jumping over the Baltimore Ravens in the division. I see them at the number four seed, winning the division. I have not been loving the way, well, the, the, the AFC North is <laughs> absolutely wild. You have, all, realistically, all those four teams can be making the playoffs. And so I, I just see the Bengals right now as they have the most talent, I think, well, not necessarily the most talent, but be able, be able to play the most consistent going into the playoffs. I have them at the number four seed. I agree with you, Sean. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals and number four for me. I think they're going to overtake Baltimore. They've got too much going on against them. Um, and, Sean, just give me your, the rest of your AFC playoffs, five through seven. Here. I have Chargers at five, Bills at six, and Ravens at seven. No, no big surprises there for me. Um, if there's any team out of those lower four seeds that I think can make a deeper run in the playoffs, it's going to be the Bills. Losing Tredavious White, obviously not helpful that much. They still have a really good secondary, so I think the Bills are the most dangerous team out of the wild cards for me. Uh, the only shakeup that I've got, Indianapolis Colts. They're 7-3 and three in their last 10 games, and all of those losses have come from one score or less. So they're competitive in every single game. They've had some good wins. Um, like everybody, there's been some unfavorable losses. But I, the Indianapolis Colts, Carson Wentz, is quietly having a great year. Um, and I, you know, I think that they're going to very just sneak into this playoffs. And I just want to say, Dark Horse, I believe. Denver Broncos. Denver Ooh. Broncos. They might sneak into that seven. Watch out, America. I don't know about that. I would love to happen, but I'll I'll, I'll know about that. You got to believe, Sean. That's gotta believe. rule number one. That is, believe. that is true. Okay. Let's go over to the NFC real quick. Uh, one seed, who you got, Sean? The one seed for me is the closest thing to us wide open in the NFC between three teams at least, as it can be. You have the 10 and 2. Arizona Cardinals, we were talking about a little bit over Sunday. we got to show some love to the Arizona Cardinals. They've been sneakily finding ways just to win games. There's the three teams, though. You have Arizona, Tampa Bay, and Green Bay. For me right now, just because Arizona right now is undefeated in their division, which is the tiebreaker offset excluding head-to-head, -head, I have Arizona holding on to the number one seed, though. But, you know, Tampa Bay and Green Bay sit at 9-3 are definitely breathing down their necks a lot. And... There's not a lot of room for air with the Arizona Cardinals. They have some divisional games left, which in the, AFC, in the NFC West, the division games are always very exciting. But Kyler Murray getting healthy. They're able to run the ball with, uh, John blank his name, um, James Conner. And then, you know, DeAndre Hopkins is a fantastic wideout. I have Arizona sitting in the number one seed right now. Yeah, I'm going to go with Green Bay Packers in the number one seed. They've got the 29th easiest, I mean, the third easiest schedule remaining in this season. And I think I'm still, they're going to get a little, some, um, some players back from injury. And I'm still a little bit worried about the, the health status of the Arizona Cardinals. Otherwise, I would, I would pick them. And I think the, still the youth factor is something that's, that's a concern for me. Um, and I don't think Tampa Bay is going to uh, oh, overcome them either. I do have Tampa Bay, though, at my number two spot right now. Like we were saying earlier, you don't bet against Belichick. And most importantly, you obviously, you do not bet against Tom Brady. I just think, you know, like, we're like I was just saying, just a second ago, if Arizona slips up, I see Tampa Bay taking the number one spot. But right now, I am sitting comfortably at number two. And then the Green Bay Packers you're talking about, I have them sitting at number three as well. Respect, respect. Uh, yeah, I have Arizona coming in at number two. Tampa Bay is a close finish at number three. 
Never doubt Tom Brady. I, I may be doubting him in the regular season. It has nothing to do with him. But I am not going to be doubting him in the playoffs, as we may discuss. There's just a the lot, a lot of noise for me with the Green Bay Packers. Just the one thing I have them at the number three spot. Just there's just so much noise with Aaron Rodgers. But they've just... overcome, came at every single time. We we thought they were going to be terrible. Uh, things were not going to go smoothly, and they have gone smoothly. Well, I guess not being terrible and finding a way to win football games is kind of the story of the <laughs> of the NFC East right now, which is where I have not a huge surprise. I have the Dallas Cowboys sitting at number four right now, winning the NFC East. And we're talking about this a little bit before we went on air. It's crazy that we could realistically have three of the NFC East teams making it into the playoffs. But right now, I just have Dallas Cowboys at the number four seed. Do you have Dallas as well? I do have Dallas as well. What once was the NFC least may now be the NFC, you said it, beast. The so, NFC beast, of course. Uh, you never know. I'm excited to see how those, those uh, three teams shape out at the end of the year. But, yeah, Dallas Cowboys, number four. Who do you have five through seven? Five through seven, not a huge surprise for five and six. I have the 49ers, uh, sorry, I have the Rams at five. Rams, very inconsistent, but I think with them having eight wins right now, that should be well enough to where they can realistically get two more wins, get up to 10 wins. I think if you get above nine wins in the NFC, you'll be able to make the playoffs. I have the Rams comfortably being in that fifth wild card spot. I have the 49ers playing pretty well as late, able to run the football. Jimmy Garoppolo not turning the ball over. Kittle doing George Kittle things. I have him sitting at number six. <laughs> and then I have the Washington football team holding on to their position right now. Or they're actually at five right now. I see him slipping down one spot. 49ers surpasses them. Washington, Taylor Heineke doing his thing, not turning the ball over. Playing good defense. Terry McLaurin, great offensive weapon. But watch out for the Gardner Minshew-led Philadelphia Eagles sitting at six <laughs> and seven right now. It's pretty. They're a pretty exciting football team. Minshew mania. Uh, I'm going to go with at five. I have the L.A. Rams, same as you. Six is going to be Washington football team. I think they're going to um, stay right around where they are right now. And then seven, San Francisco 49ers. I think they're going to sneak in, but it all depends on health as usual for those San Francisco 49ers. Um, so that is my, my uh, those are, the, that's the bracket. Okay. <laughs> that is the bracket. <laughs> is the bracket. All right. So with all this being said, we only got one more question left to answer, and that is, who's going to be in the Super Bowl? Sean, who you got? Still as blurry as ever. <laughs> you know, we have, we have the bracket laid out, but there are still no clear, clear favorites right now. Obviously, the low-hanging fruit, you have the New England Patriots and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like we've been saying all show, it's hard to bet against those two teams. But I'm going to bet against probably just something about Mac Jones. Winning a Super Bowl with a rookie quarterback, I like, I like Mac Jones. He's been playing well. He will be the franchise quarterback for New England in the foreseeable future. The dynasty is starting to build the bricks yet again. But the Chiefs getting hot right now. With how well the defense played against a not fantastic Teddy Bridgewater-led Broncos team. But they still made, they got the turnovers they needed. They were able to rush the passer. And Patrick Mahomes is playing some good football right now. So I have the Kansas City Chiefs coming out of the AFC. As for the NFC, I am going to still hold strong with my Tom Brady prediction. On his quest for his eighth Super Bowl ring, it's hard to go against Brady. And Tampa Bay, their defense is starting to get healthy again. Winfield Jr. back in the secondary. Vita Vea losing teeth on pass rushes, but he's still a beast up in the middle of that defensive line. It's really hard to go against Tampa Bay right now. So I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a rematch from last year's Super Bowl with Kansas City and Tampa Bay. Here's where I'll disagree with you, Sean. I just really... Don't see Kansas City making a run at the Super Bowl this year. Their offense is just clearly not the same. I know things have been trending up for them, but it's just not the same. Patrick Mahomes doesn't have the same protection he used to have. He doesn't have the same weapons that he used to have. It's not the same offense, so I'm not going to pick the Kansas City Chiefs here. But I am going to pick, I got to, I have to, I need to, New England Patriots to be the AFC representative. And then in the NFC, I love a good Hollywood story. It's going to be the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. No better storyline than that one. Tom Brady versus Bill, Pe Bill Belichick. It's the matchup we all want to see. It's a matchup that's going to make the NFL money. And, uh, you know, NFL usually gets what they want. So that's what I'm going to say, Buccaneers versus Patriots. Do you have any sort of sleeper team that you could see making a run into the playoffs? Or, mm. I guess mm. I'll, I'll set it up for you first. Do you have any sort of sleeper teams that you could see making a deep playoff run? That's a tough question. I think that's as blurry as the Super Bowl matchup itself. Right now, if they make it, I'm going to say Indianapolis Colts are going to make a run, take on Tom Brady in the NFC uh, right there in the playoffs. If there's one sleeper team. I, that, Jonathan Taylor's absolutely playing fantastic right now, so there's no doubt about it. 
Can he sustain it throughout the playoffs? We don't know. They have a fantastic offensive line in the Colts. But for me, out of the AFC, I think there's something about the Chargers where I feel like if they could put it all together, odds oh, doesn't help. They're having some COVID problems right now, losing Keenan Allen and Mike Williams this week. But obviously, you know, they'll, they'll be back in those magical 10 days that the, the NFL players get put in timeout for if they get COVID or whatnot. But I feel like I'm loving the way Justin Herbert's playing right now. If they can get into the playoffs, I could see them making a run. They just they, just such good quarterback play. The defense is pretty good too with Kenneth Murray and Derwin James where they can Joey Bo, Joey Bosa as well. So they can rush the pass. So actually, the Chargers making a good playoff push in the AFC. As for the NFC, I could see for I guess a sleeper team. They're the number one seed right now, but no one's really counting them in. That's the Arizona Cardinals. Mm -hmm. I think people are starting to respect them to crumble. But Kyler Murray is an absolute nightmare for defenses to stop. So I can see the Cardinals at the NFC being a team that can make some sort of run out of it. I think the Cardinals are going to make it to the NFC uh, championship. But just something about teams that are young and they, they start to make their appearance uh, in contention. Then uh, the first year that they, f they taste greatness never seems to work out. So. But so there you have it, guys. Watch out for the Colts. Watch out for the Chargers. And uh, let's see. Hopefully, we'll have a Belichick versus Brady Super Bowl matchup. Uh, no matter what, though, it's going to be a fun January and February. Absolutely. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to get going on our final shout outs of the year. Sean, who are you shouting out last in this 2021? Call it a feel good story. Call it that we're showing our young age of 21, 22 years of age. But the meme. God himself, or meme, whatever, of Dearness Colin, the Popeye's kid with a fantastic meme of the awkward kid looking over the side eye glare. He won the state football championship in New Jersey. How great is that? Seeing him and his boys make some high school history memories they won't soon forget. It's wild to see that he's already that age, but I, I, I got a good kick out of that when I saw on the Instagram the other day. I'm like, no way. Not only is he a hilarious meme, but he's also a fantastic football player as well, winning state football championship in New Jersey. Good for him. He deserves it. He deserves it. Absolutely. I'm going to be shouting out Medina Spirit, the Kentucky Derby champion, the controversial horse, who has sadly passed away at the ripe age of three years old. But I'm not shouting out Bob Baffert. I'm not shouting out the team. I'm shouting out the horse. The horse who's innocent throughout all of this, throughout the forced drug doping, throughout the forced labor, however <laughs> you want to describe horse racing. I don't know exactly if it's like a PETA violation or horse. I don't know if people are upset at that, but I am shouting out the horse, nevertheless. It's funny, we were kind of talking about that a little bit like, before the shout outs and everything. That it's funny that the horses get blamed for like, oh, they found steroids in the horse. Like, yeah, it wasn't the horse's choice to take <laughs> the steroids, though. So it's kind of funny about that. We're, in some ways, we're even worse than Russia. <laughs> sure, the Russian, maybe Russian horses are absolutely. <laughs> because we're doping our animals, they're doping their human. Well, I guess the humans don't really have a choice. Well, well no, horses well, don't yeah, have a choice, yes. excuse me. Uh, you know, anyway, USA is better than Russia, that's the moral of the story. <laughs> of course, that's contrary to what I just said, but it doesn't matter, it's neither here nor there. But Matt, I have a question for you though. With Christmas being right around the corner, mm. Check out on the Instagram poll as well. We want you guys to answer the question as well of what is the best Christmas movie in your opinion, Matt? I got to say, uh, best Christmas movie. I got two. I got to go for an oldie, Miracle on 34th Street, for a newie, Elf. Give me some Will Ferrell. I'm, I'm, I'm Team Elf all day. Team Elf. There we go. There you have it, Elf. Greatest Christmas movie of all time. And all right, guys, well, that is going to do it for this season of Crossing the Line. Sean and myself will be back in January to talk all things NFL playoffs and willing to bet there's going to be a lot to talk about. Absolutely. All right, guys, signing off for the last time in 2021. I'm Matt Entrican. Sean Sullivan. See you guys next year. Peace. Yeah.